my voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. But thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Israelites, if you could see and understand the spiritual wickedness that surrounds you, you would change the way you move. Because the Israelites and indigenous black people don't understand their enemies, they make everything about their lives public and available to all who wants to know the ins and outs about them, as well as the most intimate personal things about themselves. If only black people knew that their enemies use everything you reveal about yourself against you, you would become more discreet. If the Israelites and indigenous black people knew that they were preyed upon, they wouldn't join hands with their enemies in the beast culture. In addition, they would stop trying to civilize these demons in the flesh. The scripture said all nations conspired against you, yet Israelites believe they can change the hearts of their enemies. Israelites, only the Most High can reverse the perpetual hatred your enemies have towards you. It was the Most High that placed the enmity between you and them. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. A lot of Israelites waste majority, if not all their lives, trying to get their enemies to reverse the hatred instead of humbling themselves before the Most High to get the power they need to overcome their enemies. Israelites and indigenous black people, until your ways please the Most High, your enemies will never be at peace with you. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. To get the help that you desperately need, you must humble yourself before the Most High the Father and do as he commands. When the Most High is on your side, who can stand against you? Israelites, it's one thing to have enemies that don't have absolute power fighting against you versus the Most High who have the ability to destroy the body and spirit fighting against you. Israelites, you don't want the Most High as an enemy. Last week, you saw how the Most High changed Job's life by allowing the enemy to come against him. Once the Most High removed the protection he placed around Job, it opened the door to the kingdom of darkness. Satan said to the father, don't you have a hedge around him? If you remove the hedge, you will see that he will curse you to your face. Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. The life of Job will help everyone who wants to understand trials and tribulations, as well as how to handle yourself when the enemy comes against you. The life of Job in the scriptures will definitely encourage those of you who are wondering why you're under attack 24-7. As you heard in the scriptures, Satan revealed that the Most High had a hedge around Job that protect him and everything that he had. Do not overlook this, Israelites. We know that Job was a righteous man. The Most High revealed this to us in the scriptures. Remember, Israelites, no one is exempt from attacks. The way Job obtained the favor of the Most High to get a hedge place around him, Job served the Most High and repented daily for any known and unknown sins. Not only did he repent of his sins, but Job also made atonement for the sins of his children as well. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned, and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Job did not depend on a Messiah to erase his sins. Job did everything required of him to get the help of the Most High. 
Job had a personal relationship with the father. Because the Most High admired Job's heart and commitment towards him, the Most High blessed Job. Israelites, nothing has changed. If you serve the father and keep his commandments, just as the Messiah said to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, you will have a hedge place around you. A lot of Israelites do not have a hedge around them because idolatry have separated them from the father. The workers of iniquity in high places made sure to separate you from the father. That is the only way they can take advantage of you by separating you from the father. The beast religion made you believe you were serving the father when you accepted the Roman God as your Lord and Savior. Remember, Israelites, no one can serve two masters. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Israelites, you can't make the Roman Messiah your first and second master because he's supposedly the father in the flesh and the Messiah. In addition, you place the most high, the father, as another master that is beneath the Messiah. Do you see how deceptive the beast religion is? You only have one master, the most high, the father. The father has appointed a deliverer, the one you call Messiah, to carry out his will. Two different entities. Israelites, it is important that you understand this. Listen to me with an ear to hear. There's a minority few in the Israelite community that believe because I tell you to serve the Father and worship the Father only, I am rejecting the Messiah. A lot of Israelites need to ask the Father for the skill of listening. I know the role of the true Messiah and I know who the real Messiah is. Even in the altered scriptures, you can find the real Messiah. I have spent many years revealing him to you. I don't know how me telling you to serve and worship the Father is an abomination. Do you serve the Father or the Messiah? If you say both, I will repeat the scriptures, the word of the Most High to you that said, no one can serve two masters. Job didn't serve two masters. He served the Father. King David didn't serve two masters. He served the Father. Despite knowing that the Messiah would come from his lineage, King David always prayed to and glorified the Father. Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. The patriarchs to the 12 tribes of Israel knew about the lion from the tribe of Judah. None of them said to worship the one that was coming out of Judah. The last series on this channel was on the 12 tribes and we reviewed the 12 patriarchs testaments. They all knew about the Messiah, yet none of them worshiped the Messiah. All of our fathers said to their children before transitioning to the afterlife to follow Levi and Judah for salvation would come from them. They all command their children to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. The Messiah himself said he didn't come for his own glory. Israelites, I am repeating what the word of the Most High command of his people. We should worship the Father and him only should we serve. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. The reason some Israelites perceive that I am rejecting the Messiah because Rome lied to you about the role of the Messiah and who he is. Our people spent multiple generations worshiping the creature instead of the creator. It's going to take some time to get rid of the doctrines of devils. I want you to know that I am rejecting Rome's Messiah. I want nothing to do with the Roman God that came in his own name. I break every single covenant I made with the Roman abomination. I am come in my father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Israelites, you must understand spiritual warfare. If what I was saying to you wasn't hurting Rome and the entire kingdom of darkness, they wouldn't go to great lengths to censor this series and many other series on this channel. The mother harlot, the Roman Catholic Church, the head leaders of the synagogue of Satan, and the workers of iniquity in high places have a front row seat to all my messages. They are subscribed with all notifications on. 
They replaced the like button with the censorship button. The synagogue of Satan needs to hear what is being revealed in the true awakening to know how to come against you and me. The kingdom of darkness is always ready for battle. They have nothing to lose. They know what their end will be. When it comes to the truth, it's the people of the Most High that I have to constantly plead with them to listen to thus says the Most High. I believe a lot of Israelites and indigenous black people don't know where they stand when it comes to their salvation. Most are scrambling to understand the word of the Most High. If only they knew that the Most High promised Adam by covenant that he would save him and the righteous of his seed. The Israelites and indigenous black people would cast their cares upon the Most High because they know that their relationship with the Father is solid. Unfortunately, a lot of Israelites believe the lies from Rome that they have to accept an idol to save them. When the truth that is meant to make them free is spoken, a lot of Israelites and indigenous black people reject the truth. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Nowhere in the altar scriptures in the Bible does it mention the covenant the Most High made with Adam to save him and his seed. The workers of iniquity made it seem as if the Most High discarded Adam and Eve. Just like the workers of iniquity make it seem as if the Most High discarded the Israelites in religion. If the Israelites comprehend that the workers of iniquity are casting spells and working against you in every way, you wouldn't attack each other. The workers of iniquity are part of the reason for the tension between the black man and the black woman on social media. Many indigenous black people are attacking each other and screaming at each other on social media about who's right and who's wrong. In the meantime, the workers of iniquity who sent the spirit of division against you are laughing at you behind your back and in your faces. They are giving you the tools to tear each other apart. A lot of black people fall right into their traps. The Israelites and indigenous black people attack each other instead of the Satans and the workers of iniquity who carry out the will of the Satans by planting the evil seed and fueling the fire. Israelites, I hope you're beginning to understand why you need to know who your enemies are and what you're fighting against. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. On social media, a lot of people from the heathen nations show support for the indigenous black people. Outside of social media, black people don't receive the same support. The wrath of the heathens continue to prevail. Nothing changed. The way the heathens gaslight black people into believing they are fighting for them is out of this world. Israelites, if they really stood with you, the conspiracy against you would have ended years ago. A lot of Israelites don't understand the enmity and the perpetual hatred the heathens have towards them. The Spirit Realm series exists to help you recognize the visible and invisible enemy. The workers of iniquity that you can see in the flesh are carrying out the evil covenants you forge in the Spirit Realm with the invisible enemies, the Satans, and the unclean spirits. Remember, everything takes place in the Spirit Realm first. What you see in the physical realm is the manifestation of what already took place. The conversation the Most High had with Satanel about Job took place in the spirit realm. Once the Most High gave Satanel permission, Job's life started to fall apart in the physical realm. Satan used the elements and the workers of iniquity to come against Job. Satanel used the workers of iniquity from Sabaeans to steal Job's flocks and to slaughter his servants. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. When the Most High gave Satanel permission to test Job, Satanel used the workers of iniquity from Sabaean to carry out his will against Job. Israelites, this is how the invisible enemy attack you. The Satans have workers of iniquity all over the world carrying out their will in the physical realm. 
the scripture said, all nations conspired against you and that they are confederate against you. When the Israelites and indigenous black people see the workers of iniquity coming against them, they put on the armor of the most high to fight the workers of iniquity, the visible enemy, just as religion taught them. The Israelites and indigenous black people put all of their energy into fighting the workers of iniquity. Most Israelites don't consider the invisible enemy that sent the workers of iniquity because a lot of Israelites fail to see the invisible enemy. Many Israelites are destroyed. The scripture said, for we look not at what is seen, but the unseen. Or we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The scripture clearly say we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, nor should we focus on the seen things. When you put your energy into fighting the workers of iniquity in the flesh, you will never get to the root of your problems. The invisible enemy is the root to your problems, which is why your focus should be on the unseen. The invisible enemy are the creatures, the scripture said, are the principalities and dark powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Unclean spirits are also a part of the invisible enemies. When the other nations come against the indigenous black people, black people are ready to protest against them, cry out to the gods of the heathens to save them. Most Israelites refuse to do what the Most High told them to do when their enemies come against them. The scripture says, submit to the Most High, resist the devil, and they will flee from you. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Israelites, did you notice the scripture said the devils would flee from you and not the workers of iniquity you fight in the flesh? James chapter 4 verse 7 also confirmed that you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. If submitting to the most high and resisting the devils will cause the invisible enemy to flee from you, why are you protesting and marching? Why are you fighting the workers of iniquity in the flesh? This is why the indigenous black people continue to fight the same battles in every generation. A lot of Israelites are submitting to the gods of the heathens that are powerless and cannot save them. If the idols of the heathens could save the indigenous black people, the indigenous black people would have been saved a long time ago. The idols of the heathens are useless to you. That's why the Most High tell you not to make covenants with the heathens and with their gods. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. The heathens don't serve one God. They serve multiple gods. Israelites, this is why it's important that you know what you worship and serve. A lot of Israelites don't know which one of the heathens gods they made a covenant with. None of their gods are the most high. The scripture said, resist the devils and submit to the most high and the devils would flee from you. Israelites, instead of boycotting the workers of iniquity in the flesh that carry out the will of the Satan's, Use the spiritual insight the Most High gave you in the spirit realm to attack the invisible enemy that is coming against you. For example, a lot of Israelites believe the beast system is designed to keep them poor. The truth is the beast system is designed to enforce the covenants you establish in the spirit realm. The Most High said to you in the book of Revelation, you are rich. I know that works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. If the scriptures say that you are rich, you need to find out what is preventing you from possessing the wealth the Most High gave to you. Israelites, you have to identify the invisible enemy and the visible enemy oppressing your resources. A lot of Israelites can identify the visible enemy, which are the workers of iniquity in the beast system. The workers of iniquity are visible enemies carrying out the will of the invisible enemy. Majority of Israelites cannot identify the invisible enemy that control the beast system. In this example, the invisible enemy is the spirit of poverty. A lot of Israelites believe the white man is holding them back and the white man hoards the world's wealth. Israelites the white man and all the other nations are carrying out the will of the Satans who sent the spirit of poverty against you. 
If black people was poor, they wouldn't have a spending power in the billions. Africa is the wealthiest continent in the world. All nations profit from Africa except the people who live there. The reason the indigenous black people are not enjoying the wealth out of Africa, the indigenous black people don't resist the devils that come to exploit Africa. They join forces with the workers of iniquity, forging evil covenants. Presently, China is one of the many workers of iniquity exploiting Africa. The Satans sent the spirit of poverty to attack the indigenous black people in the spirit realm to steal their resources. When the unclean spirit of poverty come to forge a covenant, the Israelites who don't resist, the spirit of poverty will oppress their resources in the beast system. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Israelites, do you see why you must resist the devils and break every evil covenant the moment you wake up? If you don't resist the spirit of poverty in the spirit realm, you will begin to see your finances fall apart. The Satans will send the workers of iniquity to repossess your car. The bank will foreclose on your house. Suddenly, you get into it with your co-worker and end up losing your job. Someone scam you for a large amount of money. All sorts of attacks against your resources to strip you of your wealth to keep you in poverty. A lot of Israelites would take their frustrations out on the person who came to repo their car or foreclose on their property. Israelites, instead of becoming angry with the people carrying out the will of the Satans, fight against the spirit of poverty. When you shift your focus to the spirit of poverty and begin to pray and fast against the spirit of poverty, when the Most High accept your prayers and fasting, you will begin to see a turnaround in your finances. Everything that was lost will be restored, just as the Most High restored to Job everything. The scripture said, when the thief is caught, it must give back sevenfold of what it took. Men do not despise a thief. If he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. Israelites, you have to be able to identify the thief. In the example I shared with you, the spirit of poverty must return what is stole. There's a lot of talk about reparations for slavery in the USA. The heathens refuse to compensate the Israelites in America. I bet if the Israelites in the USA come together to pray and fast against the spirit of poverty, I bet their wealth would increase and they wouldn't care about getting reparations from the heathens. If you attack the invisible enemy, the root, you will begin to see the heathens return what they stole. Israelites, you don't want the heathens' reparation, nor do you want them to set the terms for reparations. Be careful about forging evil covenants. Accepting their terms is forging a covenant. Israelites, accept the reparations that is coming from the Most High. If you accept the Most High's reparations, you will leave the heathen nations with all of their riches like our ancestors did in Mizraim. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. The Most High's vengeance and judgments are always better. Wait on the Most High to compensate you for your labor in the beast system. If the Israelites and indigenous black people decide to attack the visible enemy, the worker of iniquity, by suing the bank that repossessed their car and foreclosed on their house, in addition, the Israelites decide to expose the worker of iniquity on social media for stealing resources from a country in Africa. None of those actions will get the spirit of poverty to flee. The spirit of poverty will attack your resources in another way to continue to oppress you. This is why you don't fight back in the flesh. In everything, look for the invisible enemy and start from there. If you attack the heathens, you will keep going in circles. The result you want will never come. The Israelites in this generation have been attacking the visible enemy, while the invisible enemy continues to destroy them. Fighting in the flesh only secure temporary relief because the scripture said the devil will return. 
When the devil return, it won't come back alone. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. The spirit of poverty can bring with it the spirit of backwardness, delay, detour, setback, and many others to fight against you. The Israelites who have nourished their spirit with the word of the Most High will know how to send those devils back to where they came from to maintain their deliverance. Spiritual warfare is key if you want real deliverance. Dreams that reveal the spirit of poverty has returned and seeking to forge a covenant. You see yourself begging. You see yourself in torn or raggedy clothes. Someone steal your wallet or purse in the spirit realm. You see rats all over your house. You see yourself in a servant position. You see yourself spending money uncontrollably. Are dreams that reveal the spirit of poverty is seeking a covenant. The Most High give you access to the spirit realm to warn you, as well as to show you where you need to pray to get the help you need to find deliverance. The Most High also give you instructions in the spirit realm. If the Most High can't reach you in the physical realm, he will try to connect with you in the spirit realm. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction. The workers of iniquity only have access to you when you lose the protection from the Most High. The moment the Most High removed the hedge around Job, Satan had the ability to attack Job. Before the Most High removed the hedge from around Job, no weapon that formed against him could prosper. The Most High protected Job, and not only did the Father protect him, the Most High provided for him by blessing the works of his hands. Israelites, did you notice how the Most High provided for Job by blessing the works of his hands? A lot of you sit around waiting for the Most High to do all the work, while the Most High is waiting on you to take a step so he can order your steps. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. When your ways please the Most High, He will be with you everywhere you go. You will triumphant over your enemies. In order to obtain this favor, you have to get rid of all the idols you put before the Most High. You have to repent of your sins. The workers of iniquity in high places make sure to cause a separation between you and the Most High through idol worship. The beast religion is the leading force the workers of iniquity use to bring forth a separation between you and the Most High. Idolatry is a sin the Most High hates. The scripture said, sin will separate you from the Most High. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Israelites, when you come to the knowledge of the truth, you must break the evil covenants. When you break the covenants, the workers of iniquity and the entire kingdom of darkness have no power over you. Israelites, this is why the workers of iniquity don't want you to comprehend this message as well as the spirit realm series. Look at it in this perspective. I am showing you how the spirit realm operates. I am showing you how unclean spirits and demons attack you in the spirit realm and the physical realm. This information has nothing to do with race, people, or political views. Why are the workers of iniquity censoring messages like this? Very soon they will proclaim demon lives matter. Very soon it will become a crime to discuss unclean spirits and fallen angels. If the workers of iniquity serve the same God as you, why don't they want you to know this truth? Israelites, once you understand the spirit realm and spiritual warfare, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord 
and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. The workers of iniquity who carry out the will of the Satans don't want you to obtain this knowledge. Therefore, they censor and slander to get you to become disinterested in topics like this. The hedge of protection the Most High put around you and everything that you own is available to the righteous that serve the Father in the spirit and in truth. The hedge of protection prevent your enemies from dominating you. The workers of iniquity can't have their ways with you when the Most High is protecting you. The Satans want you to focus on the workers of iniquity that carry out their will so that you will lose the battle every time they attack you. The visible enemy is flesh. You can't win fighting flesh. Israelites, the time has come for you to increase your knowledge about the invisible enemies so that when they come against you, they will flee before you seven ways. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Israelites, the workers of iniquity are nothing but puppets on a string. If your ways don't please the Most High, the workers of iniquity will come against you in every way to destroy you and they will win. If your ways please the Most High, the Father will make your enemies bless you. Just like when Balak asked Balaam to curse the Israelites and Balaam said he couldn't curse the Israelites. Balaam said he could only bless. The reason Balaam couldn't curse our ancestors at that time, the Israelites served the Most High in the spirit and in truth. The Father was with his people. The worker of iniquity, Balak, couldn't achieve his heart desire. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. Israelites, you can make your enemies bless you only if you serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. Israelites, I know the workers of iniquity may appear to be very confident. They make you feel less than a human despite being the only pure human in the beast culture. Israelites, the workers of iniquity live in fear. That is why they're doing everything that they can to come against the awakening. They don't want you to wake up from your slumber. If they can prevent you from getting truth that will make you free, they will do everything that they can to come against you. Israelites, your freedom and deliverance means bondage and judgment for them. The workers of iniquity and the ones they serve want to delay their judgments. Don't let the workers of iniquity become a distraction for you. Shift your focus on the unseen to obtain the victory that you seek against your enemies. Make sure to repent from all sins so that at the appointed time, the Most High will make all your enemies your footstool. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler.